Hi guys, this is uh, Worm from Worms Mass Academy. Um, big demand for these <laughs> solutions. I haven't had a chance to do them. Um, I'm a school teacher and I still teach specialist and methods and uh, tutor a few kids, so I've been really busy. Um, I haven't even had a look at this part of the exam yet. So lots of people have talked about it. I've heard it's pretty calculator intensive, but uh, let's see how we go. Okay, so the first question, 13 marks. I think it's going to be long because there's five questions, but let's... Let's see, oh, and the feedback generally is just that it's been long. Okay, consider the quartic 3x to the 4 plus 4x cubed minus 12x squared. And part of the graph below, find the coordinates that point M, the minimum value of that function. Okay, so 3x to the 4, 4x to the 3 minus 12x squared. 3x to the 4, 4x to the 3 minus 12x squared. I'm going to define it as f of x. Um, it's a minimum that we want to find, so calculation f min, and I know it's a minimum of the function, like it doesn't go any lower than it, so I'm just going to say from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay, <coughs> minimum value is negative 32, when x equals 2, is that right, let's have a look. Uh, it's a plus. Lucky I checked. Plus negative thirty, negative two, negative thirty-two. Okay. So the coordinates negative two, negative thirty-two. It didn't make sense before because I know it's got to be somewhere over here. Um, oh no, I've got to update it in my case. State the values for, where, for which the graph has no x-intercepts. Okay, so that's negative thirty-two. Then if we translate the graph up 32 or any further, um, we're going to have no intercepts. So B is an element of when it's 32, it will hit it. So we go from 32, we can't include it to infinity. And that way we'll have um, no intercepts. And you could check that on your cars, of course. Now let's just check. I've got to change, did I change that? Yep, okay. So if we go back to graph and table, if we put in f of x um, and then plus 32, we should see that it'll just hit, it does hit perfectly on the axis. So we know that's correct. Okay. Part of the tangent L to y because f of x at x equals negative 130 is shown. Okay, so find the equation of the tangent. Not much space because you need to know how to use a CAS. Negative one third it was. So, highlight that. Interactive calculation line, tan line. Of course, this is the same on the other CAS. Negative one third. And click OK. I don't want decimals. 80 on, 80x on 9 plus 41 on 27. Now, I'm going to define that as g of x, because I think we're going to need it. May not, but better to have it than not. Okay, so now just to check, I would go into graph and table, get rid of that, um, just in case you put anything in incorrectly. Okay, that looks like the tangent at the point where we wanted it, so that, that looks good. Okay, um, now, so we'll say y of L is equal to, I didn't really pay attention to what that was, 40 on 80x on 9 plus 41 on 27. 80x on 9 plus 41 on 27. Let's move that x down so it looks a bit better. Okay, the tangent intersects the curve at two other points. State the values of the other two points. Um, X values. Okay, so we can say f of x equals y of l. Therefore, x equals... Now, if we go back to our cos, and because we've got f of x and g of x, um, interactive, advanced, and solve... Uh, oh, 
Okay. So, we have got negative a third. So, plus or minus root 42. It says that. Okay. So, plus or minus root 42. A 3 on the bottom and a negative 1 on top. Doesn't say express your answers in that form. Okay, find the area of the regions bounded by the, that and that. Okay, so we've got to go from negative 1 minus root 42 on 3 to 1 plus negative 1 plus root 42 on 3. The higher graph minus the lower graph. So y of L minus, is it f of x? It is f of x dx equals, now we should have those nice numbers in our calculator, they're not nice numbers but they are when you can just grab them and stick them in here. So that's our lower, that's our upper, and we want, in our case, g of x, oh, not there. Let's get rid of that. G of x minus f of x dx. Well, that looks nothing like they wanted. A root b on c. Simplify. <laughs> 784 root 42 on 135. 784 root 42 on 135. <laughs> hmm. I must have had a must have seen that one to see what, what that is. Okay, so f of x is that function, and p of x is this function. Find the value of a for which f of x equals p of x. Okay, let's call it... Hmm, do we need g of x again? No, so let's override it. So... Um, okay, it look the same. So let's just type out f of x first. It'll look like that, but what was different? Um, plus 6a minus 2 minus 12ax plus a squared plus minus 6 brackets um, a minus 2 x squared minus 12ax plus a squared go the other way Minus 12 times a times x plus a squared. I think that's what it was. Select all. Define as g of x. Okay, so let's just check it. g of x. What? How can that be right? I've got an x to the 5 all of a sudden. Ah, oh, there. That should be a plus. <laughs> okay, that looks better. Okay, so let, we'll let g of x equal f of x. Solve. Whoa. I must have stuffed something up. Plus 6a minus 2. Minus 12ax. 
plus a squared what the hell I don't think that would be an answer um start again. I'm going to type the whole thing out. So it was 3x to the 4 plus um, 4x to the 3. Um, didn't remember much of it. Plus 6a minus 2x squared. a minus 2 times x squared um, minus 12 times a times x plus a squared select all directly define g of x g Okay, so let's check D and see if that looks right. And then f of x. Stupid brackets. Okay, so let g of x equal f of x. Edit, select all. Interactive advanced. Solve. Oh, solve for A, not for X. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> you idiot. Okay, so A equals zero or that. So A is to be zero. Oh. <laughs> okay, final solutions for P dash of X um, equals zero. So P is the new one in terms of A where appropriate. So... Um, ddx of g of x equals zero interactive advanced solve okay so they're the same but with a plus or minus so a equals one or x equals one x equals one x equals um was it negative root 1 minus a plus 1 or minus 1? minus 1 1 minus a 1 minus a okay so 1 minus a minus 1 x equals root 1 minus a minus 1 so plus or minus find the values of a which it has only one stationary point um, if a was to equal 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, I'd still end up with that being a solution, and I'd end up with that being a solution, so I'd have negative 1 and positive 1, and I've also got positive 1. So we couldn't get rid of the x equals 1 solution, that's always going to occur, um, but if we don't want these to exist, well we can't square root negative numbers, so 1 minus a has to be less than 0. So, from here, if I bring the a to the other side, a has to be greater than 1. So, therefore, a is an element of 1 to infinity. Can't equal 1, because then I would have three solutions. But, if it equals anything greater than 1, these are not going to exist. So, therefore, I only have one solution. Find the minimum value of p when a equals 2. Okay, so a equals 2 is greater than 1, which means we're only going to have one solution, and that will occur when x equals 1. So, we want... We want um, a equals 2, and p equals 1, and we want to find the minimum value. Okay, so, so we can just do... Um, let's clear this all. Um, g of x 
interactive. Uh, given a equals two, Okay, so we get that, and we want to find the minimum value. So, calculation f min. So, x is 1, y is negative 13, but it just asks for the minimum value. So, um, y is negative 13. That's right. Um, and we could say yeah, y is negative 13. I'll just write negative 13. <laughs> okay, if P only has one stationary point, so it only has one stationary point, A has to be greater than 1. Find the values of A for which P of X has no solutions. So if A is greater than 0, um, that means that x equals 1 is the turning point, or like a stationary point. So, let's think. What is, what is, um, p of 1? p of 1. So we want g of 1. Simplify. A squared minus 6A minus 5. A squared minus 6A minus 5. Okay, so that has no, no solutions. And A has to be greater than 1. So, A squared minus 6 a minus 5 has to be greater than 0, and A has to be greater than 1. So let's try to solve that. Greater than 0. Interactive advanced solve for A. A. Okay, a is less than negative root 14 plus 3, or a is greater than root 14 plus 3, so it's got to be greater than because we can't have negatives. So, a is greater than, a is greater than, what was it, root, root 14 plus 3. Um... Therefore, A is an element of root 14 plus 3 to infinity. Okay, first question done. Oh, geez, this is ugly. Four, five, six. Okay, it comes in 500 milligram tablets. B, the amount of drug in the bloodstream in T hours is given by that. 4, 5, 0, 0 on 7. E to the negative T on... 5 minus e to the negative 90 on 10. Let's see if we can remember that. So let's clear everything. I'm going to get rid of f and g. Okay, let's put it in as um, what was it? 4,500 on 7 times um, e to the negative x divided by 5 and then it was minus e to the negative 90 on 5. Negative 9, no, on 10 I think it was, different. Oops, bring that bracket down. Okay, let's just check it. Uh, did I use a t or an x? 9x, I've got the x. Okay, so define that as f of x. <laughs> I'm assuming we're going to use it, I didn't even... Okay, find the time in hours it takes for the drug to reach a maximum amount in the bloodstream after one tablet is consumed. Express your answer in that form. So, B dash of T equals zero. T has to be greater than zero. Um, find the amount, therefore, T 
is equal to okay so ddx of f of x has to move across equals zero solve simplify 10 on 7 log e 9 on 2 10 on 7 log e 9 on 2 a and C are real numbers, which is what they are. They're not integers. Okay, the graph of B is shown for 0 to 6. Oh, I should probably check and make sure that it's right. So 0 to 500, 0 to 6. Let's graph it in our cows. <clears throat> I always like to do this because then you know whether or not you've stuffed it up. 0 to 6. Um, and then sketch. And then zoom auto. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, what did it want us to do? Okay, find the average rate of changing the amount of drug in the bloodstream in milligrams. Okay, so the um, average rate of change. So average rate of change. So we want, is it B of T? B of 6 minus B of 2 over 6 minus 2, which is 4. Um, so we want F of 6 minus F of 2 over 4. What? That's ugly. Maybe it wants it decimal places. Negative 33.48. Oh yeah, that's a... I hope it's... Negative 33.5 milligrams per hour. And that makes sense because it's decreasing. Find the average amount of drug in the bloodstream in milligrams during the first six hours after one tablet is consumed. So we say our average value is one on six because it's six hours, zero to six, B of T, DT, correct to the nearest milligram. Uh, okay, let's get rid of all this. So 1 on 6 times the integral 0 to 6 f of x dx 255 255.85 255.85 Therefore, um, 256 milligrams, because it says to the nearest milligram. Okay, six hours after one 500 milligram tablet of X is consumed, tablet one, a second identical tablet is consumed, tablet two, the amount of drug in the bloodstream for each tablet is apparently shown in the graph below. On the graph above, sketch the total amount of drug in X in the bloodstream during the first 12 hours after the tablet is to be consumed. Well, the first bit's going to be like this, if that wasn't obvious. The second bit we need to add, it's going to stop there actually. The second bit we need to add um, these values on. So I've got to add on a, a box there, which means it's going to go through there. I've got to add on two boxes to that. So one, two. Um, I've got to add on one and a half boxes to that. One and a half. That's rubbish. It's actually quite hard. Okay, um, I've got to add on one and a bit boxes to that. 
one in a bit. Okay, when we add these together, we're going to get somewhere there. When we add those together, we're going to get somewhere here. When we add those together, we're going to get somewhere here. I'm going to add a box onto that and it's somewhere here. So it's going to look something like that. Okay. Now, uh, find the maximum amount of drug in the bloodstream after... 12 hours, okay, so what do we know that one is? So it's exactly the same graph, but it's been moved 6 to the right, and then added to the previous graph. So we've got, um, we'll call it B2 of T, so it's B of T for, um, zero is less than or equal to t which is less than or equal to six but then we add b of t minus six onto b of t so b of t plus b of t minus six for um six is less than or equal to t which is less than or equal to 12. So that's our new function from 6 to 12. Um, so if I said um, f of x plus f of x minus 6, so we want to move it to the right and we're adding the two together. Let's define that as g of x. And then go and see if it looks right f of x, g of x, uh, we want to go from 0 to 12, okay, zoom, auto, what, 0 to 12, zoom, auto, what the hell is that? Okay, uh, what did it go up to the graph? It's going to make it easier. Um, oh, I see. Because <laughs> that goes down to negative infinity. Okay, we'll go 0 to 500, 0 to 12. 0 to 12. 0 to 500. Okay, that looks pretty much like what it would. So we go analysis G solve max of the second graph 7.78 um, and 7.78 okay and then 450 so what does it ask for okay therefore t equals 7.78 hours and b of t is equal to what did it want to two decimal places 455.82 milligrams okay oh that's done nice Okay, two down, three to go. Okay, horizontal bridge position five meters by the ground, 110 meters in length. The bridge also touches the top of three arches. Da, da, da. Let X be the horizontal distance, left side of the bridge, and Y be the height in meters above the ground level. Um, okay, arch one can be modeled by the function that. State the V of A, where A is an element of R. Okay, so that's five. 
and that's 5. That's 40, that's 40. That's 75, so A must equal 75. Um, okay, describe the transformation that maps H2 to H3. Um, so it's translated 35 units to the 35 meters. H is translated 35 meters in the positive x direction to become f3 of x. Okay, the area above the ground level between the arches and the bridges filled with stone. The stone is represented by the shaded region shown below. Find the total area. Okay, so this here looks to me like a big um, rectangle. So we can say total area under bridge is 5 times 110, so 550 meters squared. Area under arches. Well, there's three of them that are all the same size. And if I go from 5 to 35, my first function, which is, it's annoying having to flip back and forward, uh, 5 sine x minus 5 pi on 30. 5 sine x minus 5 pi on 30 dx. Okay, go back. Got to get rid of all this now. And clear all. Let's get rid of our functions. Oh. Delete. Okay. Um, so 5 sine x minus x minus 5 times pi on 30. Um, we'll make that f of x. Define f of x. Now we have to go from 5 Okay, so let's go, oh, we'll go from five, um, yeah, five to 35 of f of x dx. Oh, is it one exact? So I've got to put a three out the front, three times. Let's go back, oops, wrong thing. Um, Correct to the nearest square meter. Okay, so we got that was 286.48. Therefore, the stone area is 550 minus 286.48, which is about. So 550 minus that, 263.52, 264, 264 meters squared. That's what we think that, because it's to the nearest square meter. A second bridge has a height of five meters above the ground. Its leftmost point is inclined at a constant elevation of pi on 90 radians. I'll show another uh, and it spans the horizon. Let x be the horizontal distance in meters. So it's pretty much the same question. We've got this new bridge going. Out. State the gradient of the second bridge um, correct to three decimal places. So I've got 10 of pi on 90, which is 10 of pi divided by 90. 0 0.035 was it to three decimal places? 0 0.035. P is a point on arch five. The tangent arch five, so this one, has the same gradient as that bridge. State the values of P, correct to two decimal places. 
Okay, that, so that graph will be f of x, but it'll be minus the same point. So minus 40. Pardon me. So, um, we can use f of x, but redefine it. But it's been moved. Was it 40? Um... Yeah, it's 40. Okay. So, and then define that as f of x. Okay, so we want to know when the gradient What do we call that function? h2 of x? Where's, where's it gone? Okay. So, d dx of h2 of x equals 0 0.035. Find the coordinates of p. Therefore, x is equal to, so, d dx of f of x is equal to, edit, paste, no, it's not right, okay, edit, select all, interactive, advanced, solve, E, what's that, let's do it again in decimal, well, oh, it's got to be between, <laughs> um, go back, go back, go back, so given, um, 40 is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to, was it 70? I don't know. 54.36. Yeah, well, 70. So X is 54.36. And Y is therefore, that's what I want. Um, so... We need to find f of 4.99, 4.99, so therefore p is 4.99. That makes sense because it looks like it's nearly at the top. It couldn't be at the top because then the gradient would be zero, but it's pretty close to it. Okay, so a uh, supporting rod connects a point Q on the bridge to the point P on arch five. The rod follows a straight line and runs perpendicular to the second bridge as shown in the diagram on page 18. Find the distance PQ in meters correct to um, two decimal places. Okay, so we know We've got the bridge like that. We know the angle in here with the horizontal is pi on 90. We know that that point comes down and intersects P <coughs> at the point um, 54.36 and 4.99. Uh, 54.36 and 4.99. Where'd it go? So the curve. 54.36, um, 4.99. Okay. We know that that's perpendicular. Um, we can't use tan because this length here, and this isn't the hypotenuse of that triangle. So what we're going to do... We've got to find that equation, the per, uh, the normal at the point 54.36, which we've just done on our cas. So we want to find um, 54.3626. So uh, calculation line normal at 54.36264848. Okay, 
So negative 28.64x. So the normal is negative 28.64x. Oh, where the hell's it gone? Okay, and then plus 1561.73. Okay, so we've got that line. Now we need this line, and we know it goes through 5 on the y axis. So the gradient's going to be m mm, y of the bridge. Oh, I guess the road is 10 upon 90 x plus 5. So let the normal equal y of the road. Okay, so we've got this equals tan pi divided by 90 x plus 5. Select all. Interactive event solve. Okay, so 54.29. And then we need to find out what the y value is. So we use that tan tan of pi divided by 90 times our x value and then plus 5 6.896 6.896 so 54.296 0 x equals 54.296 Two nine six zero and Y. This is the point Q. Y is six point eight nine six one. Okay, so we've got that point. So we the distance of PQ is equal to the square root of 54.2960 minus 54.36 squared plus 6.8961 minus 4.99 squared which is okay the oops that's not the square right the square root of 54 point two nine that you're supposed to be under your stupid thing Minus 54.36 squared plus that value minus 4 point copy. Minus edit paste squared one point nine zero eight one point nine one meters. So that's the distance between the point P and then the point Q. 
Okay, probability, the fun stuff. Okay, doctors are studying resting heart rates in adults in two neighbouring towns, Maslan and Statsville. Resting heart rate is measured in beats per minute. The resting heart rate of adults in Maslan, and I'm just reading what I mean of that and that. Okay, so let's say X. It's not binomial, it's normal. Um, 68, 64, because it's a square. The probability that 60 is less than X, which is less than 90, because it's between those two. Um, 68, 64. Clear all. Let's get rid of our functions. Okay, what, what was I saying? Um, nope. <laughs> Okay, interactive distribution, continuous norm CDF, um, 60 to 90, was it 8, 8 to 64, yep, and 68 must have been, 0 0.8384, 0 0.8384, three decimal places, 0 0.8384, 0 0.838. Okay, the doctors consider a person to have a slow heart rate. The person's resting heart rate um, is less than 60 beats per minute. Okay. Um, it's known that 29... <laughs> that's random. Probably at Massland. Okay, so that's... That's our probability that they have a um, slow resting heart rate. It's known that 29% of Maslin adults play sport. It's known that 9% of Maslin adults play sport regularly and have a slow heart rate. Let S be the event that the Maslin plays sport regularly and HB. Okay. So that's going to be 9 over 100. Because it's the ones who do both. Over... 29 over 100, which is 9 on 29, which is three decimal places. Why would they want 0 0.310? That's stupid. Are the events H and S independent? Okay, if the probability of H given S is equal to the probability of H, then independent. The probability of H given S is 0 0.310. The probability of H, they have a slow heart rate, is 0 0.1587. Therefore, as probability of H given S does not equal the probability of H they are dependent which makes sense because they're not equal to each other Okay, find the probability that a random, random sample of 16 muscle and adults would contain one person with a slow heart rate. Okay. So, um, maths land is binomial. I've got 16 people and the chance that they've got a slow heart rate was 0 0.1587. And we want the probability that it contains, so we want the probability that M is equal to 1. Okay, 16.1587. Distribute and distribute discrete PDF. Uh, 1, 16. 0.1587 so 0 0.1900 what is it one or two 0 0.1900 so that'll be that for random samples of 16 
um, MathLearn adults, p hat is a random variable that represents a proportion of people over slow heart rate. Find the probability that p hat is greater than 10%. The probability that p hat is greater than 0.1 is equal to the probability that m is greater than 10% of 16, 1.6 which is equal to the probability that M is greater than or equal to two. So, oh, what am I doing? So now we want binom um, CDF, two, 16, I nearly did infinity, 16, 0.1587, 0.747, if it's to three decimal places, or they might have changed it. 0.747. Okay, for random samples of N Maslan adults, um, P hat is the random variable that represents a proportion of people who have a slow heart rate. Find the least value of N for which P hat is greater than one over N is greater than for random samples of N mass line adults P N P hat N is a random variable that represents the proportion of people who have a slow heart rate. Okay. Find the least value P hat So, p hat is a random variable that represents a proportion of people who have a slow heart rate. So, if we had, um, let's call it hmm, mn, um, that's binomial with n 0.1587. We want to find the probability that p hat is greater than 1 over n. So, if we times that by... Um, the number in the sample to get what the... So this is our proportion sample. So we should call that pn. P hat n. So I'm going to say M n is. Oh, let's not say that. We know that that has to be greater than. Oh no. We know that P hat of n has to be greater than 1 over n. So that's the same as. I'll say. The probability, the probability that p hat is greater than 1 on n, I'm going to say that's equal to, because if I times that by n, I get my, like, m. So in this case, the probability that, like, my, my discrete values, that's the proportion, whereas this is our x values. m is greater than 1, and that has to be greater than point um, let's write the next line so the probability that M is greater than 1 has to be greater than 0.99 now if M has to be greater than 1 which is greater than 0.99 so we'll say X or M MN is approximately binomial with uh, n comma 0.1587 and we want that to be greater than uh, 1 so therefore n has to equal okay so we don't know what the number of samples is 0.1587 we want it to be 99 percent so uh, graph and table binom cdf 
Oops, wrong one. Get rid of that. B, fine, I'm CDF. Okay, so our lower value, we want at least one. So we'll go from two to X, X trials 0.1587. Get a table of values. Error, error, error. So we've got to work it when we first go above 99%. So on the 39th trial, therefore N is 39. That's a bit different. I hurt my head. It's too early in the morning. Okay, the doctors took a large random sample of N adults, a random sample of adults from the population of Statsville and calculated approximately 95% confidence of a proportion of Statsville adults you have a slow heart rate. The confidence interval they obtained was that determine the same proportion used in the calculation of this confidence interval. So P is going to be 0 0.102 plus 0 0.145 on 2. Uh, 247. So half of that is going to be 0.12. Three five. Point one zero point two four seven divided by two. Let's check it. Um, point two four seven divided by two. My brain work was working. Explain why the confidence of the proportion of adults with slow heart rate could be different from the proportion of Massville. Um, I guess because here, oh, based on this sample, the confidence interval does not contain the um, proportion uh, p hat equals point or p um the probability h is point one five eight seven. So the confidence interval does not contain the proportion that, therefore, as it's a 95% CE, it, it, this is like spesh, it would be highly unlikely that they are the same. It's a bit unfair, I reckon, because it's it's basically like null hypothesis stuff with um, specialist mass for anyone who does special. Bloody hell, how long does this question go for? Oh, we're getting closer. Okay. Every year at Massland College, students hike up to the top of the hill and that rises beyond the hill. The time taken by a randomly selected students reach the top of the hill is given by that probability. Find the expected time minutes for a randomly selected student from Massland College to reach the top of the hill. Give your answer correct. It's one decimal place. Okay. So. Your expected value. Um, you could say E of T, I guess. Um, it's like they're trying to f make it hard to, f with notation. Um, uh, 
So we know that's the integral from zero to infinity of t times m of t dt. So I've got to type this bloody three on fifty t t on fifty squared. Oops. Go back to the calculator. Okay. Integral zero to infinity x times three on fifty times t on fifty squared. It's like they've tried to find the ugliest functions that they can. Okay, three on fifty times um, x on x on 50 squared e to the negative t on 50 cubed bloody hell e to the t on 50 squared times e to the negative bracket t on 50 x on 50 cubed d x that was just ridiculous okay give your answer correct to one decimal place so 44.6 six minutes was it minutes minutes okay students who take less than 15 minutes to get to the top of hill are categorized as elite that would have been me ha <laughs> ha find the probability that random research unit is categorized as elite give your answer to four decimal places so 0 to 15 of m of t dt Okay, so we want the same function. Copy, edit, paste. We want to go from there to 15. But we want to get rid of that extra x out the front. Okay. 0 0.0266. How many decimal places? 0 0.0266. But wait, there's more. Thank God, we're nearly there. Uh, the year 12 students at Maslin Secondary College make up one seventh the total number of students at the school. Um, of the year 12 students, about 5% are categorized as elite. Find that probably a random selected non year 12 student at Maslin Secondary College is considered elite. Okay. So. Let t, t, that's t, equal year 12 student. Pardon me. Okay, one percent of time. So we want the probability that they're elite, given that they're not in year 12, which is the probability that they're elite and not in year 12 over the probability that they're not in year 12. Okay. So probably they're late and not in year 12. That's the probability that they're elite one. It's the probability they're elite minus the probability they're elite and in year 12. So elite and in year 12. Elite and in year 12. Okay, 5% are categorized as elite. So that's one on one on 20. And then one seventh are elite in year 12. So one on seven. What am I doing? So that's the probability that they're elite minus the probability that they're elite and in year 12 over 
the probability that they're not in year 12. Okay, the probability that they're elite Of the year 12 students, 5% are categorized as elite, but the amount that are elite is 0 0.0266. Okay, so the amount that are elite, 0 0.0266, minus that they're probably elite, they're elite and in year 12. So elite in year 12 is 5% times 1 on 7 over the probability they're not in year 12, which is six on seven. <coughs> um, so we're gonna use a previous answer. So let's do this. So minus one divided by 20. Times, was it one on seven? Divided by six on seven. One on seven. I just want to do it properly so I don't stuff it up. I hope they want a decimal answer. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be non decimal. Uh, oh, I didn't even look at what it was. Point zero two two seven. Zero point zero two two. Seven. <sighs> okay. Consider the functions of the form. Blah, blah, blah. Find the coordinates of the local maximum of f in terms of a. So let's go back. It's pretty long. Like I'm pretty over it now. Um, and then you've got to be in the mood, I think. <laughs> so initialize. Initialize, um, get back out to the main screen, delete whatever we've got. Okay, so let's get these functions down. Um, eighty-one x squared a minus x on four a squared. Eighty-one. Um, so I've got a, I had a fraction, didn't I? So. 81x squared a minus x put a times in there just to be safe a minus x on 4a squared so that was f of x and then the other one 9x on 2a squared. Um, 9x on 2a squared. Uh, and that's our g of x. Okay, so let's make sure that they're right. Nothing's defined. Whoa. The hell is that? Ah. Oh. Hmm. Well, the calculator just done something funky. Well, <laughs> what the hell is that? Okay. Okay, so they, they look right. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to find the coordinates of the local maximum of f in terms of a. So, f dash of x equals zero and we want the coordinates therefore x equals okay so I wonder if we can do it through this uh, calculation f max No, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so um, ddx of f of x equals zero. 
solve for x. So x equals 0 or 2a on 3. Um, but x is going to equal 2a on 3 because it's a positive cubic. Um, therefore, 2a on 3 and what was the other one? Because we know that that would have to go like that because it's a turning point at other way around. It's a negative cubic. I just said the wrong thing. So it's a negative cubic. So now it's got to go like that. And that point is A because it's a repeated factor. Okay, so 2A on 3. So we want to find F of 2A on 3. So F of is 3A. Okay, find the X values of all the points of intersection between in terms of A where appropriate. So it doesn't require working. So F of X equals G of X. Solve. Simplify. Oh, bloody hell. Really? I don't think it could be that, could it? F of... F, of F and H in terms of A. So F of X, 9 on 2X squared. Have I put it in right? G of... G of X... 9x on 2a squared. Um, is there something I'm missing? A is a positive real number, so does that make any difference? Um, given, given a is greater than, greater than, what is greater than? Zero. It's still crap. Okay, let's check out f of x again. Negative 81, x squared minus a, is that the same? Negative 81, x squared, x minus a on 4a to the 4. That's wrong. Bloody hell, have I stuffed it all up. So, change that to a 4. Okay, that's right. Um, okay, so that's going to be... That's still correct, but my Y value is 3 on A. Makes sense, because it wouldn't affect the X values, because that, that A is a dilation from the, y, uh, from the X axis, which affects Y's. So three on A. Okay. Um, let's have a think. So the oops, the intersection of f of x and g of x. Um, did I redefine it? F of x equals G of X solve okay 0 a on 3 2 a on 3 
find the x values. So x equals 0, a on 3, 2a on 3, I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Find the total area of the regions bounded by the graphs of that and that. Oh, I don't even know what that looks like. So let's go back here, put in f of x and g of x. Sketch them. Sometimes it does that, so you've got to go given A and then the same. Okay, now A has to be greater than zero. Okay, so zoom in. So we can see from zero to A on three, the red one tire, and then from um, a on 3 to 2a on 3. Now we could just use mod of both of these functions and then do one minus the other. See if that works. Um, mm, stuff it. Don't want to confuse you. Um, so f of x, because we've got to do the mod of one minus the other, um, f of x, g of x. Okay, so red is higher, so straight line minus, so from 0 to a on 3, we want h of x minus f of x. dx plus from a on 3 to 2a on 3 we want f of x minus h of x dx therefore the area is equal to okay so let's try that on the case let's hope it just spits out the answer because if it doesn't we'll probably have to cry okay integral integral of 0 to a on 3 of g of x is the second one so g of x minus f of x dx plus integral from a on 3 to 2a on 3 of f of x minus g of x dx 1 on 8 it's a nice number so I'm thinking area equals 1 on 8 units squared okay consider the function from 0 to 2a on 3 so that's just what we had but it's only between 0 and 2a on 3. Evaluate 2a on 3 times g of 2a on 3. How is it different from the other function? It's f of x. Oh, I've gone past it. So f of x, 81x squared, a minus x for a. It's the same, okay, so that's f of x. 2a on 3 times g of 2a on 3, but that's f. Okay, so let's go 2a on 3 times f of 2a on 3. So that's two. We don't have a to find, do we? That's bizarre. Yep, add it, delete. Because I wouldn't expect it to come out with an answer. Oh, but it does anyway. <laughs> okay, so it's two. Equals 
equals 2. Find the area bound by the graph of G inverse of X and Okay. So let's go back to here. That's this. So two A on three. If I want to find the inverse, analysis sketch inverse. Okay. And what do we want? So why did they just make us do that other thing? G of 2a on 3 um, times 2a on 3 so if you think about it G of 2a on 3 so just say there's 2a on 3 and G of 2a on 3 that's going to be a rectangle so I think what they're aiming for us to do is we know that if we wanted to find the area of the inverse it's the same as that rectangle minus whatever the area is under the function. So our area is two, what we found in the last one, minus the original function from zero to two a on three of g of x dx. Okay. So um two minus um, zero, two a on three, f of x, dx, one. I didn't have a to find, did I? Bloody hell. Um, There's always a chance that it's not one. It could be something in terms of A, but I guess that's oh, no, just one. Okay, so that equals one. Find the value of A, for which the two graphs have the same endpoint. So. That, that means the X and Y value would need to be the same. And the endpoint is 2A on 3. And then, so that's the endpoint of G inverse. So we could let that equal G of 2A on 3. So they'd have exactly the same endpoint when the X and Y value are the same. So, um, 2. Oh, Let's just do it here. 2a on 3 equals, now we said f of 2a on 3. Solve, no solution. Awesome. Um... I don't get why that doesn't work. What's F? So, equals 2, 8 on 3. And then given given x equals
equals two a divided by three. Um, solve that interactive solve for a. Okay, so we get a is going to be greater than zero, so it's going to be three root two on two. Therefore, a equals three root two on two. If a equals three root two on two, then they're going to have the same endpoint. So let's have a look. What are we going to here? Uh, a equals three root two divided by two. And then analysis sketch inverse. Okay. So analysis trace, 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 no, trace, trace. Let's go three root two divided by two. Huh? What was the question again? Um, the value of A, for which the graphs of that have the same endpoint. X is three root two on two. What's A? If A equals three root two on two. Um, it's two A on three. So two times that on three. So it's just going to be root two. So that's going to be the end point at root two. So trace. Um, Two, but we want root two, so they should have the same endpoint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. I was like, hang on a sec, what's going on? Finally, you're enclosed by that when they have the same endpoints. Okay, so I'm thinking the easiest way to do this, if we look at that that graph there, um, it's going to be between the line y equals x and um. Uh, from there to root 2, what is it going to be? So the original graph to x, um, but the mod of it to make it, yeah. So it's going to be from. Let's clear all this. Okay, so we know f of x given a equals three root two on two. divided by 2. So that's our function. Now we want to find the area between that and the line y equals x. So I'm just going to say this minus x um, between the modulus of that because I want to find the absolute value area. You could do this a much longer way but I'm not going to do it because I need to get to the toilet. <laughs> um, where are we? That is from 0 2 um, root 2 of that dx so top graph minus bottom graph but the modulus hmm. 
Is that right? That should be right. From zero to root two of that minus that. Ah, but I've got to times it by two because, okay, if we've got this curve and this curve and then this curve and this curve, there's y equals x. If I do f of x minus x, I'm going to get that area in there. And then I do the same for that area in there, but I've got to times it by two because of the symmetry, because I'm using line y equals x. So therefore, the area is, go back to the other one, two times that. I know I forgot to do something. Two times standard. So it's a quarter, quarter of a unit squared. Thank God. That's over. <laughs> um, there you go. Exam two. You wanted the solutions. There they are. Hopefully I haven't stuffed anything up. If I have, um, I'm not going to make this video again because it took me too long. All right. Cheers. See ya. Oh, um, I'll be creating videos for next year's year 12 so that they can learn online as well as with their teacher. Hopefully help them out a bit. So um, don't forget to tell your friends in year 11, year 10 so they can subscribe and then uh, hopefully help them out. Thanks, bye.